we've been in the topic of similarity. One of the instances in real life that we talk about similarity was you want to draw stuff that represents you know, much, much bigger things. And the most common example, which we already looked at, is maps. You look at a map, and we're used to reading maps. We've seen maps before, and obviously they're a much, much smaller representation of what you got. They retain all the same, does anyone remember? Similar figures, they retain two things from the original, and they change size. They have the same... Scale. Mm, you're talking about a, a sh uh, one shape, and it's an original, and it's similar figure. You want to get the same... Well, see, scale is not a thing that you can keep the same. Right? I think probably what you mean is the proportions of the shape. Like this side is meant to be twice as long as this one. Right? Well, if you have a look at the similar figure, this side will be twice as long again. Right? So you've got proportions, and then you've got features. Do you remember that? Right? So if you've got a triangle, you then end up with a triangle. Three sides, three sides, four sides, whatever. Okay? So maps do this. All of the features, all the proportions are the same, but it's just shrunk down. Today we're going to have a look at building plans, which are kind of like a specialized sort of map, and they've got all these different sort of subparts to it that I want you to understand. Okay. So, building plans. What makes up a building plan? There are sort of two main parts of it, and they each come from a different perspective. Okay. So I, this sounds a bit funny to call it this way, but the first part of the building plans are the plans. And what we mean is a top-down view. Maybe that's even worth writing for yourself, right? When we say plans just by themselves, what we mean is a top-down view. So, you're like, you know, bird's eye flying over the top. What are the different outlines of this thing? Okay? So, there's the plans. Then you have this other set of things that goes along with it. Because, of course, if you've got like a two-story or a three-story or whatever story building, then looking at it from the side or from the front and seeing its elevation, how tall it is, what's the profile look like, that gives you a very, very different picture. So you've got a top-down view, and then you've got an elevation, which basically shows the profile and the height. Okay. But then within plans and elevations, you can break it down a little further. And all of these, like the reason why we have so many of these is because these are really useful. Um, you might think, wait, like, I'm not going to be an architect. Yeah, you, most of you probably will not, and that's fine. You are going to likely live somewhere, though, and you probably are going to get a plan, the building plan of where you're going to move, and you want to actually want to be able to interpret. Like, what does that look like? The bathroom's there, and the kitchen's there, and all of these sides, and what have you. Okay. Which leads me to the first, different, uh, the first two parts of the plans, which are, um, you're going to get what's called a site plan. Site plan. Okay. Site plan. So in other words, you're interested in a building, but it's got a context, right? It's got a block. Okay. So on that block, where my color go? On the block, you've got like surrounding buildings. You might have, you know, a garden. All of these kinds of things, etc. Like a garage that might be separate or a shed, whatever. All these things form the context for your building, right? On the block. But then secondly, you look inside the building. This is outside the building, and then there's the inside, which we call the floor plan. And this is probably what you're visualizing, right? So this means I want to know like what are the rooms, what are the different features, where are the windows and doors. So you can probably say list out all those things. Rooms, windows, doors, etc. Okay. So all of that is thinking from the top down and looking at everything so that you can see it all laid out nicely. Then I want to come back to elevations, right? Now, remember I mentioned it shows the profile, it shows the height, but depending on which angle you're looking from, you'll get a different elevation. They have really, really ordinary names. And we have what we call our front ele elevation, which is if you're standing, as the name suggests, at the front of the building and just looking at it. <laughs> And then secondly, bless you, can anyone give me what they reckon would be the other side? A side elevation. Generally speaking, a building's front and back elevations will be pretty much the same thing, but mirrored, right? Whereas a side elevation, that might tell you, for instance, um, in my house, my house is really long. So that gives you a lot of meaningful information that the front elevation doesn't tell you. This is your top down view, okay? When they talk about front elevation versus side elevation, by convention, even though, like, why should it be this way? 
The convention is for isometric view that the front elevation is coming from the left. Okay, so this is me standing over here looking at that side, whereas the side elevation is standing kind of over here and looking from the right to the left. Okay, does that make sense? So one of the things that I always did when I was drawing these diagrams is I would just draw a little man and I draw them out here just to remind myself and give me a visual cue. This is the front of the thing. Okay? And if you like that, then fine. Okay, now secondly, have a look at this um, number two, which is where we're gonna spend most of our time together. Okay? For number two, uh, and you can see here are the actual questions for number two in a second. You got your diagram there, but you need to get it a particular size, okay? Now, let's actually think this through because I had to do this, so I, I think you guys can probably work it out. Being that, like this comes from a, a, a book. Right? This comes from a book. They've got some distances up here, some lengths. Thank you, They've got some lengths, and then it also provides you a scale. Now, since they give you both of those, even without the physical book in front of you, you should be able to work out, and I'll give you the easiest one, you should be able to work out how much one of these lengths should be on your computer screen, okay? Now the one I'm gonna go for is this one here. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit clearer. It says four meters, right, four meters, and the scale is one to 400. In other words, this floor plan, or I should say this site plan, because I've got the whole block, this site plan is 400 times smaller than the real thing, okay? So therefore, on your screen, or if you had a book, on your book, how long is this supposed to be on your page? Now think about it, right? Um, four meters, four meters is 400 centimeters, right? 400 centimeters. But the diagram is supposed to be 400 times smaller than 400 centimeters, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take this distance and I'm going to divide by 400 to get a real distance. So therefore, I want you to look at your screen and actually use your ruler, because I had to think around with mine to get it to exactly this. I want you to make this length zoom in or out to such a point so that when you put your ruler on the width of this driveway, driveway, it should be exactly one centimeter or as close as you can to get it. You might need to go to your percentages because when you go control plus, control minus, whatever, it'll jump up and down in like 10%, 25%, whatever. You're probably gonna have to be a little more fine on that. And very likely, because your computer screens are all different sizes, you'll have a different percentage to the person sitting next to you. 